Hi, I'm Jeff from Home Renovation DIY, the YouTube channel that's designed to help you homeowners get all the information you need to help renovate your own houses. And today we're covering a really cool subject matter. It's about demolition in your bathroom. A lot of people want to renovate their own bathrooms and we are going to put a compilation together of all of our experiences on camera so that you have all the information you need to help do it yourself and without having a flood. <laughs> So let's talk bathroom demolition. It's time to get empowered, okay? Because if you're going to do a DIY bathroom renovation project, the first thing you need to know is what does the demolition process look like? What should you expect when you're finished? And what is it that you need to protect yourself from doing while you're doing your demolition? So in this video, we're gonna cover how to remove acrylic tub surrounds, Roman tubs, built-in tub shower combos, your flooring, your plumbing, all kinds of different situations with different kinds of plumbing and different kind of structural situations as well so that you have all the information you need to not cause a bigger scope of work or a disaster in your home. So knowledge is power. Here comes a great big whack of it. Sit back, learn, and if you are gonna get a renovation done in your house and maybe you're just gonna save some money by doing the, rent, the demolition yourself, here's some other information for you. Doing it yourself means you know what to expect when you're finished and you're gonna be confident in the scope of work even if you're bringing in a contractor. I've heard the story so many times before in the industry. Guys will come in, they'll start doing the demolition work. Oh, they get all excited. Listen, lady, or listen, man, the, uh, this is a much bigger job than we thought. We have all these problems we're gonna to have to deal with. You're gonna to have to give us more money before we move forward. Classic contractor situation, okay? Protect yourself. Do your own demo. Present the home like it's ready to be rebuilt from a certain phase of the construction process and you eliminate their ability to take you for a ride. All right? It only takes a couple of days. You can even buy one of these portable green bags and put it out on your own yard and they'll come by with a truck and take all the garbage away. A couple hundred bucks, you can do it yourself and you're going to be confident that it's going to be done right and you're not going to have any kind of flood damage. All right, so sit back, relax, enjoy. Ask us all your questions at the end of this video. We'll see you on the other side. In this video, I am going to demonstrate to you my system for removing existing ceramic tile. Now warning, if you're one of these people who love sledgehammers, I'm sorry to disappoint. Don't ever use a sledgehammer to remove your tile floor. I've seen it happen before and people actually break their floor joists. So when you're doing a new flooring job and you have existing tile, um, I'm going to say probably 90% of the installation of tile projects in homes that have got a wooden subfloor look a lot like this. And this goes for kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, hallways. Have a look down here, Max. This home has got a ceramic tile, all right? And it's not in greatest shape here, but you can see there's a plywood layer. This is what we call direct bond. So this is uh, cemented directly to this plywood. And if you count the layers, there's four of them. That makes this plywood a half inch. Now, in our area, the building code has us using 5 8 tongue and groove subfloor plus a half an inch plywood. It still falls a little bit shy, okay, of the amount of wood that we need to get an inch and a quarter of substrate. Still an eighth thin. But what we got here, the reason this is a cheat is because you can see underneath the plywood right here, this is existing vinyl floor. All right, and underneath that vinyl floor, before they put that on, there's a quarter inch plywood. So what happens is you have your house and it has a vinyl floor and you call a tile guy and you order in your installation and they come along and they screw down a half inch plywood over top of your existing floor. And then they tile right over top of that surface. And this is the most common installation in the market today. It's a huge cheat, I hate it. I wish people would take all these extra layers out because as a result of that, They've lost the ability to know if they can't screw down the floor to the floor joists and get rid of the squeaks. They don't know if they've got dips and valleys. They're not using floor leveler and none of the doors work. So these closet doors that we have over here are the bifolds. They actually don't open all the way. So if you have a house like this, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks for getting this out of the way, getting all the way back down to the original subfloor. That way you can install your tile and your doors will work again. Now, I'm a big fan of cleaning as I go, just so that I don't have an accident. Um, these plastic grills, they're garbage. We're not putting these back. Uh, I never put a plastic grill back on because no one can ever step on it. It seems stupid to ever buy them in the first place. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're just taping off the door because when we're doing this tile smashing business, 
I don't want little chunks of tile flying into the next room. The other room adjoining here has actually got hardwood on it. And the last thing I need <laughs> is to damage somebody's hardwood floor because it's some rogue piece of tile. All right, so these demo bags here are awesome. They're like plastic burlap sacks. I mean, they package the heck out of it, don't they? Holy cow. Seems like an awful lot of work to stick it in a small box, but... These bags are a little bit thicker than our six mil bags that we use for regular garbage. They're a seven mil, ooh, but they have a, it's the way they're constructed. It's like a nylon mesh, right? It's, it's like anti-tear, anti-anything. So when you're breaking up your tile, because what we do is we just smash the daylights out of the floor with a small hammer. We scoop it all up, put them in these bags. It'd be nice if they were a little bit shorter because a bag that's this strong, I mean, that's gonna be way too heavy <laughs> when it's full, but I just like to go with something comfortable, 40, 50 pounds, haul that out of here. I'll buy a few extra bags, I don't even care. I'm not throwing my back out for anybody. And uh, I don't wanna get all cut up. And I don't wanna have this stuff, having a bag burst on me halfway through the house. So this is great for transporting garbage. Love these things. This is a great time actually for us to explore their installation technique. See if we can learn anything. Okay, see this? Classic direct bond, right? So we have a lot of cement. They use a, a nice thick trowel. Okay, you can see the trowel grooves right here. Great contact with the tile. But, direct bond on plywood. And this is why you shouldn't do this. Most guys don't take the time to wet the plywood while they're installing their tile. And so it doesn't actually bond to the plywood because it's too dry. <sighs> you guys look awesome. <laughs> All right. And there you go. I think... I love it when people don't install tile right because it makes my job so much easier to remove this floor. I'm going to be able to find all my screw holes and everything without any difficulty. And now we don't have to beat the living daylights out of it and create all this dust. So we can put the masks away guys if you like. Just wanted to talk about this real quick. There's so much you can learn from a tile job when you're doing the demolition. So I wanted to point something out. Just going to grab it. Ah. Down here, have a look at this. So we talked about before, about how a lot of this tile job, it didn't bond to the plywood, all right? Now, in this one area here, it bonded to the plywood. It is absolutely fascinating. It's the only spot right here. <laughs> and in every other area, the tile comes up and all the cement is full of cement right here, okay? But in this area, the tile came up clean. So kind of an interesting idea. And this is the kind of thing you see when somebody's working along, blah, 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 and they put down their cement and then they stop to have a break. Go answer a phone call, five or 10 minutes goes by, they come back, they lay their tile, they keep on going. What happens is the air dries out the top of the cement. So when you press the tile onto that cement, the part that's in contact with the tile is now dry. And so then you don't even get a bond. But all of that moisture that was in that cement ended up bonding to that plywood where it never did anywhere else. It's absolutely fascinating. I wonder if this is just the only spot that he ever even used a sponge. Maybe he had a spill. I don't know what's going on. It's just bizarre. Although I am very happy that as soon as you get past this point, it starts popping up real clean and easy. There just are not enough screws in this plywood. Okay, these joints line up. They should be staggered. And it gets a lot more strength if you stagger your joints, especially in a hallway. 
The screws here are like every, almost eight inches, which is not enough because remember there's another linoleum floor underneath this and another quarter inch. So you're not just attaching this plywood, you're, you're sandwiching and bonding all of that together. These should be every two inches and then every six to eight inches, I would probably go six. If you're gonna cheat and go over top of an old floor, you should go six. It's not against the rules to do that, but if you're gonna do it, throw in enough screws that you don't get the, the floor moving around and popping. There's a lot of areas in this floor where the grout's chipping out, and it's because of the movement from having the joints like this and not using enough screws. So it's kind of funny. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live. There are minimum standards for everything we do, and this should be a lot more screws, like I mentioned, and it should be a flooring screw, but my bit's not working. Because this... No kidding. It looks like a drywall screw, Max. And it is. My God. All right, so here's the deal. That is totally unacceptable. Even if it's a flooring screw, this screw should be longer, first of all, because it's got to pass through an inch and uh, almost an inch and a half of material, including the vinyl. And so it's just the, just the tip of that screw grabbing the subfloor. Unbelievable. No wonder there's so much heaving. I'm wondering if maybe the subfloor in this house is a lot more level than I originally thought. It's just such a bad installation of the tile that's causing all this waving. That would be really good for us. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Let's put this, the idea of the fact that the screws are wrong aside for a second. And let's show you how to find them. In this situation, if there's a lousy bond with the plywood, there'll be a lousy bond with the screws. And they'll all be available. Okay? Isn't that something? So you can see he's doing about every six inches or so. So we're anticipating another one here. And there it is. And what we're gonna do to save ourselves a lot of time and energy is if you have the ability to back out the screws, then great. If you don't, then you've got to use that great big red bar and some pry bars. You've got to find a spot to get underneath the floor and start ripping it up. So, they cheated and I'm benefiting. Once I get this one up, I'll be able to use that bar and get underneath this plywood. It'll just pop right off because it's not screwed into anything and it's fine thread screw. That's not a flooring screw. That's not even a coarse thread drywall screw. I mean, holy cow, you're gonna cut corners. At least stay on the road. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I don't see any more screws, so let's just see if we can pop this off here. And there's the original floor. Bum, 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 bum. Nasty. Okay, I think that's gonna be a little bit faster than trying to find all the screws and backing them out. So every job is a little bit different. In this one, our job is quite simple. Usually we have to use the bar like that on a plywood that's been installed. So if you're gonna do a demolition in your house, I suggest you buy the bar. Costs about 30, 35 bucks, but worth its weight in gold because if you do have a cement that's bonded well to this plywood, you're gonna have a hard time finding the screws. And like I said, usually they're every two inches and every six inside, that's a lot of screws. You'll find it's a lot easier sometimes to just rip up the plywood and then go and find the screws that are left behind and pull them out. All right, and that's pretty much the whole process. Once we got this layer off, we're gonna sweep this up a little bit. This layer comes up easy because the vinyl is uh, installed on quarter inch ply and this stuff is going to be installed this stuff is gonna be installed with staples. Yeah, and it just lifts off real easy. This will be a piece of cake. Well, there we go. That's pretty much everything there is to know about removing ceramic tile. Remember, the system is simple. Smash or remove with one of those scrapers. Then you've gotta clean it up a little bit and get rid of your plywood. Outside of that, you know, get some really good bags. Make sure you wear gloves. 
and some safety gear if you want to have that on. It's not a bad idea to protect your eyes, especially if you're not familiar with this kind of work. Um, listen, if you've enjoyed this content, if it's been helpful to you, then hit the like button. We'd appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel for all kinds of home renovation DIY tips and tricks. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at home renovation DIY. Listen, we'll see you again next time. So before we tackle this project, one thing we have to do, rule number one, if you're touching any plumbing or plumbing fixture, turn off the water supply to the house. You might think I've got a shut off valve, I'm safe, but I've been in situations where we just move something and a water supply line in the wall burst under pressure because it wasn't installed properly. Never take a chance with your water supply. So in every home that I've been in except for one, which is very unique, the water shut off valve is on the front wall of the house and it's right next to the sewer and all those pipes that are heading towards the street. So when you go down in the basement, a lot of times they're in a really awkward, tricky spot. Not a big surprise. So we just reach in, grab the valve, uh, crank it clockwise. So you turn it off. After that, we go and open a tap, drain the water out of the lines, and then we're always safe to do any plumbing without any risk of causing serious damage to the home. So rule number one, now that we have the water off, we have to drain all the lines in the house to drop that water level in the pipes, the water supply, below the area where we're gonna have surprises. So on the way up here, we open up the kitchen faucet, hot and cold, and now we're just gonna open up these lines. You see none of the water's coming out, the air's rushing in, the water's all emptying out of the line. So now we're good to go. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to remove a drop-in tub. Um, this particular model does not have jets, so there's no access panel. So you have no ability, no shutoff valves. Speaking of shutoff valves, did you turn off the water to the house yet? No, not yet. Rule number one, Matt, when touching the bathroom, turn off the water, drain the lines. This is the third story. We have an accident now. We got a lot more work to do here than we planned on, all right? Fair Look enough. at that, taking care of. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so you can see here, come on in and have a good look at this, Max. These tubs are installed in new homes what they do is they create a, a wooden bench, they cut out, and then they drop the tub in, and then they tile. Now, on occasion, they'll get tile and they'll prop the tub up and they'll put the tile underneath, but that doesn't happen too darn often. Usually the standard procedure is to cut the tile around, grout it, and then silicone. So this tub is basically the last, it's like set in, and you can remove it without even touching the tile, which is a huge advantage, because with the tub gone, Demolishing the rest of this stone and framework is really easy. With the tub here, you've got to smash every tile, pull every screw. You can't get a sawzall in properly. So this is how you would take this out. And then you can actually take this down to Habitat for Humanity when you're done. So before we take off the tub, what you need to understand is, is basically when we're doing demolition, we're uninstalling that which was installed. So your, your Roman tub faucet system comes in two parts. There's the rough end, and then there's the trim. So once you remove the trim from the tub, you disconnect the waste and overflow. Now you can just lift the tub right out. There's nothing else holding this down but gravity. So there's usually a little hole here. Oh, let's just double check. Yep, the water's off, good boy. Do that. Take off the handle. And this is threaded on. Okay, and then that one is siliconed into place. That's just lovely. This ring here has got an oval shape to it, and it's just turned to lock everything in place. So what we need to do, basically, is just take our hammer, turn that ring, Kind of like that old toy we had as kids, you know, you had to match up the shapes in the puzzle. And then it'll just lift right off. Now, the part that you see here is actually mounted underneath the tub and it's not going anywhere. So we repeat this process and then we can just lift the tub out. Now the spout itself has a little access panel here. And we will find the right one sooner or later. <laughs> A 
undo the set screw. And a little bit of water never hurt anybody. This one has this little ring here. You just slide that out, slide that off. That's it for that one. Of course, we're going to take this one off as well. Same system here. You can see how this is independent now of the tub. Okay, the tub is free to lift out. As soon as we remove the drain and the way overflow. I left my drain remover tool at the other bathroom I'm working on. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate a little trick that you can use if you don't wanna buy the remover tool. Throw your hammer in there. This is just threaded on. Once you get it started, Now the overflow is disconnected. Of course, this is the push drain. You just got a good grip, grab that. So this little guy here is just a pain. It's plastic. We'll just be done with that. Put it in the hole. And we're gonna be turning counterclockwise. And once you get it going, Any silicone that a plumber may or may not have used will be rendered ineffective. And you can just use that counter torque action and unthread it. Little bumps and bruises and scrapes are part of the game. There we go. Now we're ready to rip this out of here. So before we can remove the tub, it's a pretty deep, it's a two-man silver tub. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just remove this door. I usually like to leave the doors on because they're great for dust control, but in this case, that extra inch and a quarter is gonna be necessary. Just punch a hole through the bottom, and that's it. It's that easy. Yeah, Matt. There we go, we'll just set that outside. We don't wanna throw this out yet, we wanna put it back on. So quick tip, whenever you take a door off, Take the hinge pin, put it back. This way you know where to find them when you go to put the door back on. You'll always lose them if you put them on the floor or in a pocket. The tub, how heavy do you think it is? 70 pounds. Probably not quite that bad. Okay. Now, it shouldn't be attached to anything. I've cut the silicone and removed all the fixtures. Let's see if we can get lucky and just give it a yank. Yep, it's gonna be okay. So now that the tub is totally removed, all we have to do is lift it out. It's not that heavy, although it is a little easier to do if you're not in the tub at the time. Yeah. Seriously, you wanna get out? Yeah, bugger. So here's the trick. The little bear claw, I'm lifting straight up. We grab a hold of that. Now, it's on a plywood platform, and so if we keep it level, Matt, yeah. It'll just pop right out, and then, there we go. <laughs> Classic, eh? All right, this is crazy, but check this out. I don't know why, but every time I pull out a tub, somebody has left a bunch of crap garbage in the tub area. This is insulation. There's nothing here to insulate. The wall's all closed off. The insulation's on the other side of that wall board. This is just somebody, I mean, they're not insulating this tub to keep the heat in, or there'd be like a lot of insulation. So either they were trying to insulate the tub and they were lazy, or they just had to clean up a mess and they were lazy. So you can see what I'm saying. Now that the tub is gone, you know, all I've left is stick frame. So yeah, the plywood is difficult to remove when it's tiled, but if you remove the framing first, take out all these blocks, and there's nothing left supporting all the weight. We're just gonna peel this open like an orange. Okay, 
Now listen, listen up. Um, I have no ability of knowing if these handles are in the open or closed position. Okay? So what I want you to do, oh, he's filming this one, <laughs> blooper reel, is I want you to open it up so small it just dribbles. Okay. And then I got you know I got a second or two to control this mess. Okay. Okay. So I got you on speaker here, Mac. Let's let's take this nice and gentle. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Look. Yeah, I got water. So hold on. Okay, go again. Open. Okay, a little, little more. Yeah. All right, we got the spot. Okay, full blast, please. All right, full open. Let me know when the lines are pressurized. All right, yeah, we're good. Beautiful. Sweet. Okay, so there we have it. Good communication, a wrench, and a little patience. And you won't cause a flood in somebody's home. <laughs>
Very important here that you come right up the other side, right? As much as you can. I'm gonna just set this down. So now what we have here is we've got control over the water. So if any water inside that toilet spills over that little pee trap that we talked about, it's gonna be trapped in the, in the plastic bag while you're carrying it out. This also makes it easy for two people to carry out because I can hold the tank. Matt can actually grab the plastic itself to carry that up. But before we go, can I have the coffee cup? Here we go, my favorite. I have one of these every day. I keep it in the truck for just this occasion. Every time you open up the flange the toilet, you do not want sewer smells. Stick your old coffee cup in there. Now you're good to go. Just hold this level. Stand up straight, it's okay. There we go. This mirror that's installed here that we have to remove was installed over top of the, the plugs. So this is fun. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna bend them, place them back inside again. My hope is that we can lift the mirror out of position without causing this to short out. <sighs> so there's three basic ways to install mirrors. One is a surface mount screw clip. You've seen the little plastic things and they got a screw head. The other one is you can use a, uh, like a two-sided tape and silicone and you can stick it and glue it. This one here is it's a moving bracket. It's on a, it's on a track. And so you can take the tops off. And then the glass basically just falls forward. And this one, they've used a combination of adhesives as well, probably because they have this cut around there. So the idea is you loosen the glass and then you can lift it and pull it off the plugs. Remove the mirror without destroying it. This broken glass is a pain in the butt to clean up. There we go. I think we're clear. Now, just a word to the wise. Always wear gloves. I prefer to do this kind of work by myself and have the second guy around to open doors and close doors for me. If something bad happens here, I'm gonna know the minute it happens, I'm gonna step aside. This is not safety glass. This kind of stuff here can cause personal injury, so. Nice and careful. So we've got another mirror to remove here, and this is the same clip system as we demonstrated last time. The last time was a really large mirror, and you'll notice that it came off without much resistance, so we're hoping to get the same kind of effect this time. So like once again, we just pop up the clips, and <laughs> it doesn't want to come. Ugh. Now, you can realize I used a lot of force there. Glass is a lot stronger than you think. They've obviously done some silicone backing here. Let's try sliding it. There we go. Now it's released. So let's go take a look and see what it is that these monkeys actually ended up doing here. Okay. Lots of this black two-sided adhesive goop for mirrors. And then a great big dollop of silicone as well. <sighs> Don't ask me why. Folks, if you're using the clips, by all means, let gravity do the work for you. You don't need to get creative and use all this sticky crap. You're just risking an accident for somebody later on. All right, so removing a sink is actually quite simple. Whether it's just demolition or you're just installing a new one, uh, the process is the same. Of course, have your water off, close your valves. Uh, the P-trap down here is gonna carry water, but at this end of the P-trap, there's a, a nut here that you can just use your pliers and loosen that off, and then you can just come up. So now the drain is separated. Water supply line, same reason. It's a compression fit, so it just gets screwed on with a pair of pliers. Now usually you can hand tighten these and give it a quarter turn, so it's not that difficult to get off. I've already gone ahead and loosened them off, but you just use your fingers and disconnect. Now, the only thing left is these clips holding the undermount sink. All right, there's a little metal bracket attached to the sink. This sits in it, and then you tighten this up and it compresses. You take these clips off, and you just grab your sink. And 
voilà. So we're going to remove the shower unit now. There's two aspects of this demolition. One is we have to cut the wall and remove the wall. Uh, and then we have to remove the shower unit from the drain system. This was uh, plumbed in, so it's glued together. There's no way to remove this without cutting that first. So now here we go, I'm wearing safety glasses. This is for all you people who sent me comments on my videos and thank you for them. Safety first, lots of love. Here we go. This is a fiberglass base. So basically what we have to do is we have to hammer around to separate the drain system from the shower system. All right, so back to the more refined method. Instead of just beating the tar out of it, what I got here is I got my jigsaw and I got an old broken blade. It's perfect because uh, I don't want to be going too deep down here. I don't know what I'm cutting through and I don't want to damage anything else that might be underneath the shower. So just turn it on and finish running the cut. And you can see we're independent of the shower now. So this will stay where it is and we can actually lift the shower off the drain system and we're not going to break any plumbing lines and cause ourselves some future problems. So basically with this reciprocator here, there's this massive guard here that you're supposed to push up against the wall while you're using it so then it doesn't vibrate around. You're actually cutting a lot more efficiently than rather than cutting way out here. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and cut this and uh, show you guys what's going on. So the idea is when you're cutting, if you think you're bumping into something, stop. <laughs> Open up the wall first and have a look. Okay. Here. Okay, man. So that's what you're cutting. This is the, the framing for this wall. This is some back framing. I'm not sure what the back framing is for, to be honest with you, because this is the framing that supports the overhead, right? Mm -hmm. You can see when you look through the hole that the shower goes in front, right? And then it's covered in drywall. Yeah. Right? So it's the same thing. So there's a flange that's going up and around. It's all covered up in drywall and painted in. So the only way to get this shower insert out of here is to get rid of the framework that surrounds it. So we'll finish cutting through here. Don't cut the vent. This is what's bringing the air from outside to chase the water down the drain, which is why the water gets out nice siphon, okay? Uh, just a little tip at home. If your water is draining really, really slow, you might have a block in your vent. And there's no air to follow the water down. It glugs like a Coke bottle upside down. Blah, 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 blah. If you have uh, air coming in behind it, it flies right out. The tip on this is awesome. Yeah. Because it just seems to want to rip everything that's in its path. You don't have to be strong, you just got to have good leverage. too much if you're not holding on to it. You'd be surprised how easy this stuff will just fall out of the ceiling. Oh, like that. So now we've uncovered how this is installed. This is actually pretty easy. You can see the uh, fiberglass here. It ends and there's the old caulking line. And they're just covering a couple of screws right into the framework. There's nothing up top. It's actually just a piece of drywall with a metal trim. Barely even attached, to be honest with you. A handful of screws. You want to just yank that down? It's mostly just tape at this point. There you go. Okay, 
and I'm sure on the other side it's very much the same. There's a half inch drywall here and it's just covering over the screw heads. So we just got to chisel out a little bit of drywall here and back off the screws and then that's it. This will just come out as one unit. Now it's a little bit big and nasty. You might find it easier. Just take the sawzall, cut it into thirds so that it's easier to carry out instead of trying to maneuver through all the doorways. But uh, this is how they do it. They come in one piece and they leave out in many. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just demonstrate how to cut this. It's pretty simple. This is only a $6 blade. This is not an expensive piece of equipment. You can use a sawzall. You can use a hand saw. You can use a jigsaw. You can use a circular saw. You could use a hammer and a chisel if you had to, but it's easy to cut. Go ahead, give that a rip. So that's pretty much the extent of it. We're gonna pull the shower out, cut it in a few pieces, make it simple, remove all the drywall from the walls. We're gonna to have to relocate the vent. Luckily for us, we're gonna open up the floor because we're doing a brand new tile for the center drain. So we have to relocate the drain, move the venting into this wall over here, won't be in the way. And uh, then we'll just be putting down our special Dietra floor tiling and we'll give them back their bathroom. So when you're doing a demolition, it's not like on TV. Uh, what you want to do is you want to uninstall in the reverse order of the installation. So you start with the finished trim kit. Most of these shower fixtures have got a little cap on the handle which hides the screw. Okay, so inside we have a little set screw. This holds the handle on. Now we have these rings here. Now given this is not the traditional style that you see in most homes nowadays, this dates back a little bit. Oh my goodness. This one's uh, seized on pretty good, but it's made of solid brass. So we're using the screwdriver to create a dent. And then change the angle a little bit. So we can drive that nut around. Bit of a workout there, Joe. It keeps you in shape. There we go. There's the ugly beast right there. So this is all compression fittings. Not even soldered on. So you will find that whenever you have a fixture that's attached outside the tile inside the actual tub area. It'll be a compression fitting, some sort of a threaded system, whether it's on a hose or pipe to pipe like this is. If the only part that's exposed is the handle, that means the valve itself is inside the wall, you're more likely to find something that's soldered in there. In that situation, all you do is take off the face plate or the trim kit, they call it, and then you can remove the rest of it later. So this uh, house was built in 1983. It's 2016 right now. So you can see the solid brass fixtures last a long, long time, which is why it's important when you're doing something that you're expecting to last a long time to invest money in good quality fixtures. Unfortunately, a lot of things available on the market today for low value are actually plastic with chrome coverings, not brass. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a bathroom demolition to do it safe and have a lot of fun. So the first step of any renovation, of course, is demolition. And that's a fancy word for take out the old stuff. So what we've got going on here today is let's just talk real quick about some safety equipment. Um, I got these awesome gloves of the color of my football team. It works. Uh, you're also, if you're a homeowner, you're going to want to get some, maybe some eye protection working with this tile when you're working with it you know you get a shard or you're going to get cut edges you want to make sure you're being smart about it 
Another good thing would be to get a mask. A lot of the reasons we're ripping these bathrooms out is because we got mold in behind the walls. This is an N95 mask. It's for particulates. This is especially good for dust and mold spores and that sort of thing. So you buy three of these for 10 bucks and they'll last for the entire length of the renovation. Make sure you make that investment. And if you don't own a fancy pair of gloves, I grabbed these from the store today. These are five bucks. This is a leather palm, leather backing on it. Great investment if you're DIYer, one size fits all. So I would suggest those as well. Now, before we get into this, let's talk about the process. Demolition, of course, is just the removal of what was installed in the reverse order. And if you follow that advice, everything will go well. But before we get started, rule number one, turn off the water. I know that you have control, you can turn off the valve and all of these wonderful things, but you never really know what's behind a wall. So to protect your home and your investment, just turn off the water and open the taps at the top of the house and open the taps at the bottom of the house, drain out all the lines and get rid of the pressure. There we go. We just hear the air rushing. So we're cleaning out the lines. Now we know when we renovate, we're not gonna be able to cut a line and have a pipe burst on us. So for ripping out the bathroom, you need a few basic tools here. One is a tub remover tool. You can find this at your hardware store, plumbing department, about 10 bucks. A uh, screwdriver to turn it, a couple of different bits. Usually the Phillips head and the flat head is about all you're gonna run into. Got your drill and you're gonna need your Allen keys. Now, most of these tubs here, they have a set screw on the bottom. You can't see it, it's in an awkward spot, but you need to know it's there so you don't drive yourself crazy trying to unthread this or rip it off the wall. Until that set screw is released, you can't remove this. So why don't we just start there? Um, this is a Delta system. It's an Imperial system, of course. So this is a 532nd bit and you got to go underneath here. So we go to this side and usually one twist is enough to release this darn thing. Yep. All right. So now you can see it on camera, it makes sense, right? That sits right in there. Now you can stick this in a whole lot of different places and be very unsuccessful. So be patient with it, turn it a little bit until you feel it sit in the seat and then you can give it a turn. All right, of course we have the shower valve. Usually these handles have a decorative cap on it and you can just use a screwdriver to pop that off. But it has a set screw as well. Now that that's out of the way, there's usually a couple of screws on the plate. These older model systems always have surface screws. The newer ones, there's a wall plate that gets mounted and it snaps in, but that makes that simple. So now your wall can be removed without interrupting your plumbing, okay? Secondly, we wanna remove the overflow in the waste now. Usually just one or two screws here. The idea here is the plumbing behind the tub is going to stay in place when you remove the tub. So you have to disengage the trims here so that that can happen. So here's my fancy tub remover tool and it has got two different functions on this depending on the size of the tub. This, the short end goes right in there nice and snug over the crossbars. And the way I do this is I lay a screwdriver across the top, push down and turn counterclockwise. Now in the older tubs, because it's steel, they usually just use plumber's putty to put these on. This tub strainer basket is so recessed, my tub remover tool is of use. Zero, useless, not gonna help. All right, I gotta have to show you another trick. So that is amazing. That's the first time ever my tub remover tool didn't work for me. I'm not sure what's going on with this, but uh, you know, not everything is created equal, right? So we got a couple of tips that it might work for you. You can use two really thick screwdrivers or you can use what I got here, a couple of old Allen keys, great big ones. Here we go. And I'm gonna show you two tricks here. One of them is you just put in the Allen keys, okay? And then you create this cross again and you can force like that and you can unthread it that way. Now this only works if the crossbars in the bottom of the, the tub drain here are intact. Okay, and you can see that works quite well. And you can put as much force as you need to on that and unthread it. If you have a tub strainer here that the crosses have eroded away or rusted away, here's another thing you can do. 
realize that this is a chrome plated material. It's usually a soft metal like a brass. You can take an old chisel, put it on the edge of that, and kind of go square on just to create a dent. And then you can lay it a little flatter. And you can just tap it around. That takes a lot of time, makes a lot of noise, but it is effective. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure how to remove a tub if you don't get this in. Because now you're connected to the house's plumbing. If you have to remove this, and you can't remove this in strainer, you're going to use a cutting tool or a torch and cut the tub in half. I don't know. Unbelievable. So it's good to have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. And... Voila. Renovator one, bathroom nothing. All right, so all shower heads are created equal. They usually have a little shower arm, and there's a compression fitting on this as well. So if you just give it a little bit of a turn and a pull, you can get this out of the way. All right. Now, there's got a couple of options here. You can just grab right in here with your pliers and just turn it. And you're probably going to just take the shower head off. Okay. And then you can try giving this a turn. It can be a little bit frustrating because the guy that put this in originally usually uses a lot of force. Okay, so get a good grip on it. And then once you get that started, you can just kind of finish it off by hand. Of course, if you're stuck and the wrench isn't working for you, you can combine this with another trick that I know. You get the wrench on there nice and tight, throw a screwdriver in the pipe. It gives you extra leverage. And you can pull both of those at the same time. There's no way that that went on strong enough that that won't work. So once we've got our fixtures removed, the next thing is to get rid of all the silicone joints that are around here. Because we're going to be removing the walls next. And that is a lot easier to do if they are not silicone to the tub. Just grab your knife and cut. The ceiling doesn't appear to be... Yeah, it is siliconed and painted. So we want to cut that loose as well. All right, so now it's time to remove the walls. And if you've grabbed your sledgehammer or one of these beautiful Stanley bars, You've got the wrong tool in your hand. <laughs> like I said before, this is more surgery. So we have to be smart because what we want to do is we want to reinstall the new tubs around in the same space without creating a mountain of work repairing walls. So the technique that you want to use here is really simple. Grab an old flat chisel and a hammer and you want to remove this tile one at a time so we have control over the wall and hopefully we don't damage the wall board so badly. You can see tile chips, so make sure you wear your glasses. Working like this allows us to cut this wall board right beside the old painted line. And then we can create a tile line from the same spot on the wall so we don't have to repair all the drywall and repaint. Now, if you've never done this kind of work before, you need to understand that when ceramic tile breaks like that, it's not the clay that's dangerous, it's the glaze. This glaze is razor sharp. So make sure you're wearing your gloves. Now I can create a cut line and I can cut right down the drywall. Then we're ready to remove the walls. Okay, so here's the deal. If you're a home renovator and you're working on your own house, um, and you don't want to be dressed up like a clown with a diaper on your face, you know, you realize you're taking some risk, okay? So, uh, for me, I'm not a big fan of wearing the mask. 
Let's get rid of that. And I'll tell you why. I find wearing the mask makes it really hard to breathe. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I guess I'm a little old school. I kind of believe like whatever you do for a living is gonna kill you. So, you know, you can try to take all the safety precautions you like to avoid injury, that's one thing. But I'm not gonna worry about a little bit of dust now and again. Uh, if I'm working in a real dusty environment, I set up negative air and I'll wear a mask on occasion. Uh, I'm gonna cut uh, eight feet of drywall now with a reciprocator. It's gonna make a little dirt. And uh, if you're afraid of dirt, then don't renovate. <laughs> uh. You'll see here, I'm just gonna cut about one inch back from my finish line. This is outside of the tub. It's not necessary to have any kind of waterproof board here. So that's why I'm cutting at this point. The other way to do this is with a knife. If you don't have one of those fancy tools, you can always use a knife. Now, looks like the last renovator that was here used a green board. It's jointed right at the same spot as what we're doing. And then they taped it and did a bunch of mud work. So I got a half inch of mud to carve through first. But if you're patient, run this down a few times, it'll eventually work right through to the back of the drywall. Okay, there we go. Whew. I'm going to show you my technique for removing the tub surround walls. No, you don't chisel off every tile. I actually had someone comment in the section below about, could I just remove all the tile with a chisel and then tile again on the same wall board? And the answer is no, for obvious reasons like this. The surface protection, that paper that's been treated for the anti-mold and the water resistance, it's going to get damaged, okay? It's not worth your effort to try to save anything here because I'll show you how, you'll see in a second. You saw how hard it was to chip away at this. I can remove the rest of these walls in less than 10 minutes, okay? So bear with me and watch the technique. And it's real simple. What we're looking at is just smashing holes right through everything in the same swing. So here, that's a, that's a stud, that's a stud. I've cut the wall board away. Because I'm wearing my safety glasses and my gloves, I can get in there and reach in and grab it. Now just use your, your force and now use your hammer and just shake it. It'll jiggle all of the drywall screws that are in this board loose from the backside. All right, generally comes out in one piece. Things like this tear off. Okay. Now you can just walk that right out to your garbage bin. So a lot of homeowners I know have the same kind of problem. What to do with the garbage? They don't want to pile it up in their garage. They can't put it on the curb for the city to pick up. So here we go. We're going to show you a little secret. I got to do this quick before my bag blows away. All right. If you've never seen this before, this is dumpster in a bag. You can buy this at the local building stores. It's a brilliant little invention. Comes with these two straps. All you gotta do is lay it out near your curb. And when you're done, you call the 1-800 number that's on the side of the bag pay with your visa over the phone. These guys will come by, grab an arm, scoop it up, take it away for you. The whole thing full, I can put an entire bathroom in there. Tub, toilet, walls, floors, the whole thing, including the vanity in the top. It's about $250 for removal. 
brilliant deal. If you want to get a roll off bin, you risk damage in your driveway, it takes a lot more space, and you usually start at five or six hundred bucks. So, this is perfect project size. So, a quick trick here before you start pulling off all the walls to help reduce your scope of work when you're done. Remember, the, um, the ceiling here, there's going to be a drywall joint. The tape will go from here up and then across. And if you're not careful to cut through the paper before you rip off this wall, you'll peel it off the ceiling. Then you're going to have to repair the drywall and repaint the ceiling again. So we try our best to avoid that from happening. We run our knife across here a few times. Almost like we're trying to cut it right through the drywall. Because... <sighs> Lots of people use a lot of mud in the corners. You want to make sure you got that paper cut. All right, now it's right back to the same technique, only different, and just give it little tugs, little vibrations. So all these screws are popped loose. All right, and then once we've got it kind of separated, we'll downward force so that we don't damage our ceiling. There we go. So here's the edge of our ceiling now. That is perfect. There's absolutely zero damage here. It's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, when we go back with our new wallboard and tile, our new tile is going to be thicker than this old stuff. This is what we like to call biscuit. It's really thin. The newer one's thicker, so it'll actually have a thicker profile, and that is going to put us in a position where we're going to finish clean on that ceiling. No rework on the ceiling. Whew. There's another whole day you're not going to waste. I get a lot of people asking me questions about this sort of situation here, this black and the insulation. And they ask these questions in the comment section below. And <laughs> what you want to know is this is not mold, right? This is air movement. And when air is moving through a building cavity, it's going to pick up whatever dirt is around and it's going to deposit it wherever there's resistance. So this is just air movement, probably because it just wasn't sealed up tight enough on the back side of this wall. It's nothing to be concerned about. It doesn't affect the insulation quality. It just looks ugly. So if it bothers you, you can replace it, but you don't need to. Okay, so this is an empty cavity. We got plumbing and wiring back here. That's a really deep wall. It's a mechanical wall. Probably gonna have heat runs as well. So here you wanna be careful. Watch your swing. You don't want to go all too hard and punch right through here because you might hit something important and wreck it. Remember, keep your mouth closed when you're doing this sort of thing. <laughs> here we go. Same technique. All right, make sure the silicone is cut. Bit of a vibration. One thing you're going to want to do here, check for nails on the adjacent wall. Okay, make sure there's room for that wall board to open up. And when you get it going, it'll just open like a door. And again, since you're walking through your house, fill up all the broken bits that are going to make a mess along the way. You might as well leave all the mess in the same room so then you don't have to clean the entire home later. There we go. Now, this piece of board is probably about 60 or 70 pounds, so keep that in mind. Um, if you're working alone or 70 pounds is too much to carry, you can just smash across and then smash down first and you can reduce the size of the board. Right, so for the top side of this wall, I really like to smash it down into two pieces, tearing out this whole wall and protecting the ceiling while carrying all that weight and not slicing your leg on this cut tile. It can be a trick. So what I would do, let's just find a place where we know the cavity is safe. We'll smash right up that grout line to the ceiling. Now I'm going to put my hammer up against the frame on an angle here so that I can pry it off again.
same thing. All right, you want to pull it down from the ceiling, away from your cut line. Well, I mean, it's obvious that there's a lot more to doing a demolition than just taking out a sledgehammer and beating the hell out of it. I know they love to show that on TV, but let's stop and think here for a second. What if we beat the tar out of the wall and we hit the stack, right? You punch a hole in this bad boy. Now you're bringing in the plumber and you're replacing the stack right into the attic. That's attic work as well. What if you swung the hammer here and you punctured the joint in this copper line? If you didn't notice that you did that, you'd put your bathroom back together again, turn the water back on, poof, you'd flood out the entire house. So when you're tearing things apart, if you don't know what's on the other side or inside that wall, which you don't, <laughs> you have to use some patience and a little bit of skill. I know it's great TV, but using a sledgehammer inside a bathroom is really not what that tool was made for. Now, we don't want to wreck the ceiling, so we've got to pull down. There we go. Ah, we're batting a thousand. So far, we've saved the ceiling. <laughs> Remember, when you're doing a demolition and you're doing an isolated project, like we're only doing the tub and the tub surround, it's our job to now stop and think, how do I keep the scope of work from getting out of control? Okay? So one of the things I don't want to do is I don't want to have to start getting into finished carpentry because that's a brand new set of tools. That's a brand new day of work. Oh my goodness. So what we have is an outside corner bead holding this wall in place. So I'm going to grab my hacksaw and I'm going to cut my corner bead. Okay. You're going to set it and go on a 45 degree angle and you'll cut both sides. There we go. Now I'm going to rip apart my corner bead on my wall. I'm going to leave all the trim alone. There's another whole set of tools and a whole setup. I mean, can you imagine having to set up all your tools to make two cuts? What a pain in the butt. Okay, so now this bathroom here is basically a great big square. And they've put the tub in here and added this wall to bring the controls into. This style of construction means that you are going to be doing some mud work and you're going to have to do some paint. But it's only on a tiny little wall, okay? So when you're taking this apart, don't even try to save the corner. Don't try to peel it open to put it back later. You're going to crack the paint line. You're going to make a mess. Just get it out of the way. Move on. It's going to be in the way of installing your wall as well. And you can see here they've done it with nails. Okay. So the best way to get rid of this is actually swing the claw hammer at it right on the corner. Once you've popped it off the wall, you can just give it a yank. All right, now, and you can be as surgical as you want to. Find each nail, pull them out, all right? Make sure it's not gonna do anything fancy. Done. Same thing, just take your time. It's easier when you're going down, because it'll bend and break at everywhere the nail is. You just put your claw behind it, and then you pull it out, and then you can pull it down again. And if it doesn't break away nice and clean for you, just throw your claw into the wallboard. So you get the grip, and then you can rip it out. And that's where we cut it. Perfect. One more time. Okay. Remember to always close the blade before you put it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> so the majority of our demo is complete. So before we pull out the tub, we're gonna just take a minute, take all the nails and screws out of the wall, clean up any extra debris that needs to be removed. And then we're going to take everything off the floor, sweep, clean out the tub, vacuum. We're gonna start with a clean slate again before I start messing with the tub. Because the secret here is that the floor in this bathroom we want to keep, okay? So we're actually reinstalling it with the same floor still attached. So we want to take a little extra care here and make sure that as we go, we're not causing any damage that's not necessary. Again, keep your scope of work reduced. And then this kind of project is very predictable. So the next step in our demolition is we have to remove the tub. But before we can move the tub, 
we have to cut our plumbing out. And here's why. We're in an alcove situation and this tub won't pull straight out into the room because the frame is exactly the same size as the tub. But on that side of the wall, there's drywall. So I have half an inch too small to be able to slide the tub out. So what I have to do is I have to lift it, roll it, and then slide it in between the, the studs of the wall in order to take it out. And the reason I want to do it that way is because then I'm not affecting and increasing the scope of work by causing new drywall work and new painting going on. It takes a few extra minutes, but if you take the time to cut the, the plumbing out of the way, then you and pull all the nails, you have all the room that you're going to need to be able to roll the tub out. And we'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first, remember we have our water supply off. You just need one of these little copper cutting tubes. And I'm going to pick a spot that's convenient for me for putting the plumbing back together. I don't want to have it anywhere near my wood bracing. Okay, so now we've cut and capped all of our plumbing. It's completely out of the way now, so we can move our tub. And you can see the entire process for how to do all this plumbing on our next Copper to Pex video. So the last step that we have before we pull our tub out is we just go around and make sure that we pull out all of these nails and screws. Again, the gap here is exactly 60 inch. The tub is exactly 60 inch. So there's no room to maneuver here if we're constantly bumping into nails and screws. So don't drive yourself crazy. Just take two minutes. So just keep in mind when you're cleaning your wall before you pull the tub out, when you pull the tub out, you're gonna to wanna to be comfortable. So you're gonna roll it and you're gonna lift it up to where you're standing comfortable. So you're gonna hold the tub here. You got another 32 inches. So you wanna make sure you're, you're pulling all the nails up to four, four and a half feet, just so that you're not getting anything snagged, especially your hands. All right, so, so far we've managed to remove all of the shower fixtures, all of the walls, all of the tile, and we haven't damaged anything outside of our scope of work, which is new tub and new tile surround. So the last thing we gotta do before we pull the tub, make sure we cut out the silicone joint down here. And I mean, sacrifice your blade. Get that right in there. You're gonna dull off the tip. <laughs> And that's okay. That's why they make them break offs. Okay. Now we've got this moving mat here so that we have somewhere to set this tub after we pull it out. Remember, we're trying to remove the reinstall the tub in the same exact spot without damaging this tile. If we pull this off, we managed to keep this cost of this job down to $3,000 instead of upwards of six or seven. That would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do this on my own for all of the benefit of everyone out there who doesn't have anybody around who can help them out. Um, I actually am pretty lucky here because I don't have a lot of studs in my walls on the end. I've got this stud here and I've got this big cavity here that I can work with. I've only got one on the other side and all my plumbing's out of the way. So I should be okay to find some room to wiggle this out. What I wanna do is I wanna just first of all start by rolling it forward and then kicking it in so that I break the seal and get this tub away from the tile. And I think I've done that okay. And already I'm getting caught on the drywall over here. And the secret to how this works is you gotta give it just a bit of a twist and then get this edge of the tub in between the studs into the insulation cavity so you can slide it over a little bit you don't need a whole lot of extra room to wiggle one of these out. Just a little bit. There we go. Now at this point, because this is a steel tub, uh, I would recommend grabbing a neighbor. <laughs> Get some extra help carrying this down the stairs. I know there's a lot of people out there. We could probably lift this up and walk out, no problem. But remember the goal here is to reduce the scope of work. And putting a hole in a wall on the way down the staircase is not gonna help you out with that. Throw it in. Just a note, if you do your demolition the day before garbage day and you wanna recycle your tub, the easiest way to do it is leave it on your curb on, for garbage day morning. There's always somebody driving around the neighborhood with a truck picking up metal things to take for recycling. <laughs> we got a typical situation. We got a lot of debris here, but I just wanted to point out, once again, here's the stack. Our plumbing line comes out on a 45, comes across to pick up this vent and then there's a P-trap to here, and then we have this plumbing. And this looks like it could be reused. But here's the issue. Our new tub has got a different body mold to it. 
So our center line is going to be in a different location. All right, we don't have a four inch ledge on the front with a little edge on the back. So we're actually going to be moving over here a little bit and the back side has got to go up to 20 inches, not 16. So although this looks like this might be able to be saved and reused, the fact is it'll be a lot easier for us to just start from scratch and put everything exactly where we want it. So we're going to leave this in place for now because there is a P-trap full of water. But tomorrow when we start to redo the plumbing, we'll cut open the floor a little bit and cut this pipe off and we're going to establish a brand new plumbing system here for the drain. I know it's a bit of a fight, you know, you'd like to be able to save something if you can, but in the long run you're going to cause yourself a lot of problem. And this kind of stuff should not be attached to your tub under pressure. Don't try to ever force it in there. That's a sure way to make it leak. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, tips and tricks to renovate your home, give us a thumbs up. If you got questions about renovations in your house, put them in the comments below. We answer them every day. Talk to you soon. Hey, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove your tub surround from hollow walls, from vapor barrier walls, and from firewalls without damaging your steel tub. Stay tuned. So changing the tub surround is generally about a two day process, which means you can do it on a weekend. It's a great weekend warrior project. And all we do is we just remove the walls and we're gonna actually change our faucet as well because we get a little bit better looking fixture. They have the old acrylic handle. And so we're gonna update that and we're gonna put in a pot light because generally showers don't have any lighting in them. And it's kind of odd, isn't it? So we're gonna fix that. So three quick little things. New tile, new faucet, pot light. Now you've got a bathroom that's gonna look beautiful. So in a lot of bathrooms, you'll see the minimum code requirement for a shower is generally a water resistant drywall. And then this tile is just you know, installed with an adhesive. For some reason here, they managed to put a little better material back here. This is a cement board with little styrofoam bubbles so it doesn't get too heavy. But when you have a different substrate behind the tile than your wall beside it, you know that there's a seam here. And usually it's just the joint right off the edge of the tub and you bring the tile over here to cover the gap. So but before we take this off, we wanna just cut down here but in case there's any silicone or caulking, you wanna cut through the, the paint layer. This is really necessary because if you don't wanna increase the scope of work to involve the entire bathroom, then you gotta make sure that when you're ripping this apart, you're not damaging the actual wall right next to it. And just make sure you cut all the silicone joints in the tub surround before you get started and everything will come apart real easy. Next thing you want to do is just take a large flathead screwdriver or a chisel, a red bar, a painting tool, whatever you get and get to get in behind that tile. There we go. Chisel it off and yep, it's an adhesive. Lovely. Just remember when you're removing tile, it's like installing it only backwards. And there's our joint tape right there. different tool here. So the point of taking my time here is I'm going to be having this decorative box. I mean, I'm keeping this here. When you're moving, you don't want to create a whole lot of scope of work. You don't want a massive renovation. You just want to dress it up, right? We're putting some lipstick on the pig as it is. So my tile line needs to finish about the same spot right here off this corner or it's going to look stupid. So what I have to do is make sure I don't damage the walls. So I can bring my tile line right up to this caulking joint. So that's why you got to be a little bit careful here so that you can control exactly what the scope of work is. So you might lose a few minutes here, but it'll save you a couple of days of fussing around, mudding and painting and all that sort of thing. Remember the point here is to add value to your house without adding a lot of extra work. Now we've found our joint. Here's our cement board. And there's my joint. That's where it makes the transition from cement board to drywall. And the reason you want to find this when you're doing your removal is because they framed this bathroom to join up here. 
If you just start taking a hammer to this and ripping it out, you don't find that joint. Now you've also got to add the step of going to the hardware store and picking up you know, the dimensional lumber and putting more framing into your wall. But if you just take the time to find out what it is that they were doing when they built it, now we can back it up to here. So when I'm smashing things out now to remove the wall, I know I'm going to go to this point only. So I'm just going to back this tile up until it's not on the drywall anymore. And then we'll be able to rip this wall off in just two easy steps. So in a previous video, we had a technique where we just take the hammer and now that we can see the plumbing, we know where the lines are. We just smash through the wall here and that gives us the ability to just shake it up a little bit, open it like a door, right? Problem here, this tub is not getting changed out. And we don't want to open this like a door and put a bunch of scratch grooves into the surface of the tub. So what you need to understand is we have this opportunity here because the tub comes with its integrated tile flange. Okay, so basically it's molded across and then back up. And the wallboard comes down to that flange, about an inch off the tub. So what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally break through the tile at the bottom. Okay, where that tile flange is. And then just remove these little bits. This gives us the ability to do this under control. There we are. Now, generally speaking, the enamel on the tub is pretty durable stuff, but I'm not going to take anything for granted and assume that the tile guy actually has a space between the tile and the tub. So, here we go. Well, typical, you know, I mean, we've got uh, a steel clip holding in the steel tub, but the steel clip isn't galvanized, so they... As soon as the water gets to it, it starts to rot away. So now that's all just rusting out. So now that we have that part done, we're back to the old process again. We're smashing this out. I got stud here. Nothing there. And remember, we're just breaking this down into easy to handle sizes, okay? So we can take it out in panels. This takes a lot more effort than drywall, obviously. So it's very important to know where all your plumbing is. Well, that takes a little bit more effort, but still rather to take out large pieces like this to the garbage than little chunks. If you can locate the nails that holding this board in, pull them out first. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. I hate working with this material. Okay, so if you live in a semi-detached home or a row house, you're going to run into this problem. That is, a lot of the times these bathrooms are built on an adjoining wall. Now we can see in the corner here, we have a layer of drywall behind our cement board. And what that is, is that's a fire rated drywall. It'll be 5 8 type X fire code. And this is required so that there's an extra long time before a fire can burn from one unit to the next. It's a safety measure. It's part of the building code for a long, 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 long time. So if you have one of these situations, you're probably going to have to remove this wall without damaging the fire rated drywall. If you damage that drywall, 
then you should replace it and then tape the joints again. That takes a lot of extra time and energy. So we're going to do a little removal here without messing up that drywall, hopefully. <laughs> and we want to pull off the entire row of tile. Unfortunately, there's really no fast way around this. So the reason that the client wants to have this removed is because she's getting mold coming across the bottom through that silicone joint. And generally when you start seeing mold showing up in your silicone, it means that the water damage has gone to a point where you can't manage it anymore and you've got to change it over. So here's the joke. We have a cement board with a tile. Where's the mold coming from? Because it needs a food source. Water and wood alone won't make that mold travel all the way through. But now we know that there's a drywall in behind it. <laughs> so now we know that the water is transferring past the cement board and into that drywall because the drywall acts like a sponge. Which is why when you build a shower and you put a cement board up, it's not enough on its own for waterproofing. It just slows the process down. It doesn't keep it from happening. So I'm not even sure what the condition of that fire rated drywall is gonna be in when we get there. Hooray. So the property of this cement board is very similar to drywall in, in its construction and design is there's a, a mesh on the front instead of paper and then there's this interior fill okay which is cement and styrofoam bubbles just so it doesn't get too heavy and then on the other side again is another mesh so what we're trying to do is get in behind that last layer of mesh and get that separation going hopefully pull it loose without damaging the firewall okay there's the first piece that's not bad at all now it's just a matter of really Finding out how many fasteners they use to put that wall up. This is all going to come together when it comes. If you're lucky enough that your bathroom isn't on a shared wall then it'll be the same process as over here we just smash the hole through and pry it off the wood and then you're done but like i said if you have a shared wall make sure you protect it you might be saving someone's life someday Three different substrates. Empty cavity, firewall, vapor barrier. <laughs> Just doesn't get any more fun, does it? <laughs> uh. There's a joint somewhere around here. Now, this one actually is taped. Paper tape right on that joint. 
right next to where the tile finishes. So if I don't cut that paper first, there we go. I'm just gonna pull all that paintwork part, and we're right back to doing all that paintwork again. Oh, too easy. There we go. Well, there we have it. We're all done our removal process for this shower renovation. Now remember, this, this kind of information today is really vital if you have, live in a semi-detached or in a row house or if you're a condo dweller and you live in an apartment building. You're always going to see these fire separation walls in your bathroom. So be prepared for it and don't get too excited with the hammer. Um, following up after this video, I think the next video come out is going to be released about the plumbing. If you're a condo person, you're guaranteed to be copper plumbing. We're going to go through the ins and outs on how to do it. Just a copper retro with a brand new shower valve. So keep your eyes out for that video. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions about this removal process or any of the products or tools used today, put them in the comments below. I answer those things every single day, of course will help you get through your project too. See you next time. All right, so now you've finished your demo and you're gonna have questions and I'm here to help you out. So put your questions in the comment section below. I'm gonna answer those for you every single day and I'm here to help you guide you through your renovation process. So don't forget, for specific information on your particular project, use the icon. It's a little magnifying glass on the home page. You can type in some search words and it'll pop up all the videos related to your topic. So you got more information to help you through your process. And when you're done, don't forget to send us your pictures. We would love to be able to post your pictures on our Instagram page and highlight the work that you did and give other people the confidence to know that they can do it too. All right, so that's it for today. See you next time.